who worship here to the, today, Christmas Eve, uh, that Lord be with you is Emmanuel. God is with us. And today we have good news of great joy to bring uh, during Christmas. And that's especially good to hear during this time uh, in this 2020 crazy year that we have been part of. Um, we thank you for your patience coming in here, wearing masks and some of the windows being partially open. Um, you understand why that is, so thank you for your patience, maybe sitting in a spot you don't usually sit, so we thank you for that uh, too. Uh, you'll notice that uh, as we turn around and face the cross as you come forward, there is actually a screen in back now. So we have these two screens here and then one screen in back, partly for me, but it's also helpful for you as you leave, so thank we're thankful for that. Also, we have a new sign up front. Um, that uh, outside on Good Haven Avenue. Just take a look at that as you leave church. That came up this past week. If you did happen to get a poinsettia, uh, we would invite you to take it after the service with you. We'll rearrange for the other services, so you're welcome to come up and grab your poinsettia. Uh, they're not marked or anything, so just grab anyone that's there uh, if you did get that. I would invite you at this time to turn and face the processional cross as we sing the opening hymn. <laughs> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to all. For out of God's own being, Jesus has come to bring love and light to all people. Jesus is our Emmanuel, God with us, who came to gather our tears and our laughter, ourselves and our lives, into God's love. Glory to God in the highest and on the earth peace and goodwill to all. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. We have resisted his governing, we have followed our own desires. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We take a moment for silent confession. We have followed other voices of this world and not always relied on him. We not only sin, we are sinful human beings. Help us, Lord Jesus, forgive our sins and be the counselor we trust, the God to whom we go, the eternal source of all we need. Give us the peace we so desperately need. The child born to us, the son given to us, is Jesus, the son of David, reigning forever. 
Jesus who has prepared for us the heavenly promised land. Jesus who shows that we are children of God and heirs of heaven. Jesus is whose eyes, eyes every one of us is remembered even as he forgives all our sins. Jesus whose humble birth reveals that God turns the way of the world upside down to exchange his life for ours. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, you make this most holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that as we have known the mysteries of that light on earth, we may also come to the fullness of his joys in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes to us from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness on them, a light has shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of trampling warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the people. Say among the nations, Yes, the Lord, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar in all that fills it. Let the field exult in everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faith. Our second reading comes from Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of, our, of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. comes to us from Luke chapter 2. We will be standing for a portion of it, but not for this first section, because we're going back and forth between these readings. The first section is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child.
And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. We remain standing for the singing of the next hymn. In the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there were, angel, uh, there were with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. went away from there into heaven the shepherds said to one another let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us and they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger and when they saw it they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child and all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them but Mary treasured up all these things pondering them in her heart and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. whose birth we celebrate, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. It's so good to see you on this Christmas Eve. Our text is the Gospel reading which was read. I think it is safe to say that we all want to live lives of significance. We would like to make and we hope to make a significant impact in the world that we are part of. Now this doesn't mean it's accomplished, that it happens or even that we want to do it all the time, but as a whole, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. A significant life that makes an impact. And so to do this, we take our lives where they're at, and we say, well, this is where we would like to be. We would like to improve various aspects of our life. For example, if you are an athlete, you seek to improve your fitness and hone your skills in that particular sport. If you are in the mode of saving up money for whatever, you seek to get a higher return or set more aside, you're seeking to go from here to here to get improvement in that aspect of life. If you are in business, the world, even if it's not growing, you seek to tweak various aspects of that so you can do your work better. At least that's what you hope, that's what you want. Now some of this world would say that if you're not moving forward, if you're not going from here to here, you are going backward. We want to do this also in congregational life. We want to grow in love and grow in spreading the gospel, we get better at what we're at by the grace of God. We want to be significant. We want to make an impact. We want to have, if you will, 
greatness. Not greatness in terms of being out in front of everything, but greatness in our own little realm. Greatness to the extent that at the end of our life, people would say that was a good person, that person made an impact. This is to be pursued, this greatness, and obtained. Now this approach to significance sounds good. And even greatness in our little world and realm is good, and we wouldn't deny that, wouldn't deny that it's good. Yet it can, it can, seeking to go from here to here, can leave God out of the picture. Sin, at its core, is that we can live our lives in this upward trajectory, if you will, from here to here, to such an extent that God is no longer necessary. Remember those words in the garden to uh, garden uh, by the serpent, if you eat of it, you will be like God. You will move where you need to be, knowing good and evil. That was his approach to things. This is the most obvious example of humanity striving to be better, striving to be big, striving to be great. To go from small to better, to go from here to here, I think that's what we like to do. That's what the world is all about. Well, at Christmas, God does the opposite. Starts out great, remains great, and becomes small. Small. Why? To make himself accessible to us. To not distance himself from humanity that goes so far from him, but rather giving us, yes us, in our lives right now, a way to connect to him, this one who is the very definition of love. He goes very small. We want to go great. He goes small. And she gave birth and wrapped him in swaddling claws and laid him in a manger. This is very small for the omnipotent God. He goes small so we can have lives of significance and lives of redefined greatness. Now, can you imagine the conversations God had with the angel and the heavenly host as he sent them out on their task to bring the good news of the Savior's birth to humanity? And he let them know that, hey, I've got an idea. The first ones I want you to hear about this are the shepherds. <laughs> are the shepherds. I can only imagine, and this is only imagination, that they did a double take, these angels. The shepherds are not exactly society's influencers. They are not experts in public speaking. Very few first century shepherds would have enrolled in Toastmasters learn how to public speak. They were a rough and tumble bunch, a group of solitary figures who were not known for their religious lives. I can imagine the angels hearing this approach and saying, are you sure you want to bring to the good news, this greatest news ever given to these guys? These are the ones to spread it. But remember, God's all about going small doing the unlikely things. You couldn't get more small than this. Why does he do this? Why does he go small? Why does he use shepherds? Well, to bring his eternal, forgiving, and powerful love to those whose lives have been brought low and even crushed by their own sin, the sin of others, and a fallen world that you and I know is not as it should be. Lives which seem so far gone, they cannot be reached. Except this powerful God, by going small through the infant Jesus, can reach down into our lives that seem so distant from Him and distant from a life of significance. Indeed, lives that seem shattered at times. So the angels go off on their divine mission, and the angel of God and the heavenly hosts encounter the shepherds, those rough and tumble blue collar workers, whose jobs were long periods of silence, of solitary life, punctuated with flurries of activities that various animals came and enemies came and attacked the sheep. And these tough guys encountered an angel and the heavenly host, and they were 
terrified. The terror for such, was such an extent, and the word sort of implies this, that if it was possible for them to tail it out of there, to get out of the way, they would have. But they couldn't. So if you've been humbled of late, maybe you once were confident in many things in your life, but as you've gotten older, the confidence seems to be waning. You have been brought low. You have been humbled. You may have health issues that were never before on your radar screen, but now you think and deal with these issues far more than you ever could have imagined. Life in this fallen world humbles the strongest among us. And then you got our own failure points and the guilt that follows leaves us down with the shepherds as they first encounter the angels. Maybe you've been humbled by others, failed failures towards you. All kinds of ways. And yet then the angel sent by God says these wonderful words, do not be afraid. Even though your significance, your greatness is not what you thought it would be or your life would look like the way you thought it would be, even though you have been humbled, right now, do not be afraid. This going small is a unique greatness, and it is relevant, and it is joyful. The angel goes on to say that this good news will cause great joy, and the word for great here is mega joy. That will be for all people. I want to retranslate that as mega joy. And this is for all people, all personality types, all races scattered throughout the world, all ages, for all times. It is a good news for all because all deal with sin and death impacts everyone. And the good news is that God has brought someone to counter that, to take humanity another direction. What a joy-filled message. But how does he do that? How does he do this? Without missing a beat, the angel says, today in the town of David. Now we skip over the first word there. And the word is today. Today. Right now. There is an immediacy to Jesus' promise. Today, for you, right now, this is how Jesus delivers his gifts. And you see this throughout the book of Luke. Very early on in Jesus' ministry, uh, he reads a section from Isaiah where it says that the lame walk and the, the deaf hear and the blind see and the dead are raised. And then he says these words, today this message is fulfilled in your hearing right now. It's fulfilled. Remember Zacchaeus, the wee little man who climbed up the tree? The repentant tax collector came to Jesus and our Lord stated to him, Today salvation has come to your house. And then remember the thief on the cross. End of his life, nothing to give Jesus at all. There he heard the promise of Jesus. And what was that promise? Today you will be with me in paradise. No hesitation. Right now, his grace, his mercy today for you and me. And this great message is not only immediate, but it's very specific. In the town of David in Bethlehem, a Savior has been born for you. That's pretty specific. And the point he's trying to make is this isn't just some story that was dreamed up to make us feel good. No, you can go and look at this person, this object of the news that we're speaking of with your own eyes. And we're going to have you do that. This Savior, He is flesh and blood. He is the real deal. And you know, when you think about our lives, it is really good when you have specifics when it comes to the Lord's presence and His promises. Even though we haven't seen Him, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed, someone did, and they told us about Him. The disciples and Thomas were confronted with the flesh and blood Jesus after His resurrection. Jesus then got very specific as he appeared in person to his disciples and to Thomas. Remember that? Put your finger here, see my hands, put, your, put out your hand and place it in my side. Don't disbelieve, but believe. Very specific. Very specific. And he's very specific in his promises to you. You can be very sure of that. Baptism is very specific. It happened at a certain time in a certain place. 
receiving the Lord's Supper is very specific meal for you that you can see, that you can taste. He wants you to know his promises are as real as real can be. You can be very sure of that. Now, the angel goes on and says, who is this for you? The angel explains he is the Savior, a Redeemer, a Rescuer, coming to people who need to be rescued from themselves, from death, and from the evil one. And how can he do this? What right does he have to do this? Well, the angel goes on and speaks this. He is the Christ, the Messiah, who is also Lord. He is God. He is the long-promised Savior, and he's got the power to do it because he is Lord. He is Christ and Lord. Just these phrases are packed with lots of great promises for you and me. Well, the shepherds would then go and see this little one wrapped in swaddling clothes, and they went from being humbled to proclaiming what was said about him, these rough and tumbled guys, and they saw him all wrapped in swaddling claws and lighting in a feeding trough. Now, some 33 years later, he would also be wrapped in other cloth. Remember this? In burial cloths. But these would not remain on him, as the God who became small would powerfully deliver this new resurrection reality. So let me close with this. We strive for significance and greatness in our own little realm. We strive to go from here into there. And God wants us to have this, but he knows it happens if he goes from here to here, all the way down in our lives. He gloriously becomes very small. And so greatness and significance is now forever yours. It's just is. This is good news of great joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Please rise as we confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we come before you on this Christmas Eve in awe at the wonder and majesty of Jesus becoming man, what's called the Incarnation. The Savior of the nations has come, and with joy we greet our newborn King. Let the proclamation of his birth sound forth throughout the world. Give to your church faithful proclaimers and teachers to proclaim the good news of his birth, and give to your people willing ears to hear and believe. Lord, in your mercy. In the birth of your Son, you have signaled the beginning of a new creation. And while we still live in a world racked by the ravages of sin, we know that the final victory is yours. Watch over and keep safe emergency workers in all those vocations. Uh, keep them from the fam, keep, uh, keep uh, their families well, and also keep our, our families well. Lord, in your mercy. In the birth of your son, you have visited and redeemed your people. Continue to visit those who are lonely, sick, recovering, or near death. Let your presence be a comfort to them and give them perseverance until that time you grant healing. Especially we pray for the Shore family as they grieve the earthly loss of Ellen. Grant them strength, peace, and hope. Lord, in your mercy, in the birth of your son and by his death and resurrection, you have reconciled the world to yourself. Keep us ever mindful that Jesus is for all people and give us opportunity to tell others the good news of his coming so that they can join in the praise of your holy name. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, the true light has entered into this dark world to reign forever, to keep your eternal promises, to welcome new sons and daughters into your family, and to forgive the sins of everyone who calls out to you in faith. Grant that as we have known the mysteries of that light on earth, we may also come to the fullness of his joys in heaven through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We remain standing for the next hymn. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We sing the final hymn.